I'm Musemo Handahu, and I'm your host for CBC's Journey to the Stage. I'm in the presence of seven powerhouse women. They have all answered the call to be leaders and fearless forward thinkers in their respective fields. So to get the ball rolling, I wanted to touch on the idea of mantras or a catch word or catch phrase. So it made me wonder what word or words have you all been using to kind of guide yourself and to motivate yourself when you need that little extra push. I'm gonna start with you, Jenny. Badass has yeah. certainly been my, one of my themes yeah. in the last year. Uh, I think I have two girls, so being intentional mm. in terms of stepping into the light mm. uh, has been in honor of them. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I think a word that's really been resonating with me is impact. Mm. And thinking about work that I do or create uh, with community, it's, it's got to be beneficial mm. to the community Definitely. or somehow leave an impact so that we can move forward with this new sort of way of knowing or like you say in mm -hmm. storytelling, yeah. being able to tell our stories and have them heard and whatever needs that we have that need to be met people listen mm -hmm. and can try to work towards meeting those needs Definitely. in an authentic way. Yeah, and I think with the word impact as well is that it helps you to weed out the things that you don't need to be doing. Mm -hmm. So you ask yourself, is mm -hmm. this thing going to be impactful? And if it's not, then you just walk away from that. For sure. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Sarah? My catchphrase for this year has definitely been getting comfortable with the uncomfortable and mm. embracing the fact that it yes. is uncomfortable yeah. and it's okay. Yeah. Um, whether that's dealing with issues that arise from being in a student leadership position mm -hmm. or having hard talks with faculty at the, the school over specific issues. Mm -hmm. it's, or, you know, just walking into a job interview. You know, getting comfortable with the uncomfortable is definitely not an easy thing. No. And it's easier said than done, but I think it's a, definitely a way of life. Definitely. Especially for women who want oh, to yeah. get ahead. For sure. Yeah. For sure. How about you, Angela? I think the word I always try to keep in the forefront is the word healing. Mm -hmm. Everything I say and do, what is the impact of that? Mm -hmm. You know, whether I'm speaking to elders in my community, whether I'm at my auntie's house, I'm really aware that that hasn't been a conversation in our communities. And so I'm centered around a lot of these incredible women who are carrying a lot of baggage mm -hmm. and don't even know that they're carrying it. So I think I'm always trying to be mindful of how can I induce healing in this environment? Like, mm -hmm. how can I listen so that they heal? How can I speak so that they can heal? And I just want everything that comes from me to be healing. I had the privilege of giving a TEDx talk um, earlier this year. And I remember asking myself, like, what is compelling me to be on that stage? I realized that I needed to see more people that look like me on such a massive platform like TEDx. Mm -hmm. And if I needed to see it and I'm already sort of in this field, then other people need to see it as well. So I wanted to ask each one of you, why do you feel compelled to deliver a TEDx? I feel extremely privileged to have been able to you know, go in really hard spaces that are male dominated, that are specifically white male dominated and the privilege that I hold there and what I've learned from those experiences, you know, I feel like it's my duty to share like the things that I do know at, you know, granted I've just graduated, I'm working in a male dominated industry, but there is someone that's a year, four years behind me that, you know, wants to do big things and can't see themselves there. So if I can share what I've learned and it's helping the next girl, whoever she is, do whatever it is that she wants to do and she feels like she can walk away with a very tangible how of, oh, this is how I can approach this, this is how I can look at this and have it not just be a dream in the clouds, it's something I can actually achieve. To me, that's, that's something I can't pass up. Well, I had TED and a, a TEDx talk on my New Year's resolution back in 2017. Um, yes, <laughs> but hold on. <laughs> I talked myself out of it because I didn't think I had an idea to share or an idea mm -hmm. worth spreading. I mm -hmm. think that's the, mm -hmm. 
uh, that's a term, um, I didn't think my story was valid. And it wasn't until I started doing uh, leadership workshops for girls and I would ask the question, I would tell them all to close their eyes and I would say, do you think that you're a leader? And no one would raise their hand. Um, and this would be, you know, girls from all socioeconomic backgrounds. So I'd ask them, open your eyes, and I would say, okay, no one raised their hands. Why don't you think you're leaders? And they would say, I don't have ideas. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything to share. So then I thought, well, I can't walk into rooms and talk about leadership, talk about confidence with, without having that confidence mm -hmm. in myself. Mm -hmm. um, so when this opportunity came up, I knew that it was something that I had to do mm -hmm. For, for other girls that are looking up to me and to say that your story is valid, you don't have to have more experience. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, I'll speak to young girls and they have so many ideas. They know which problems they want to solve. They know what's going on around them. So I'm going to use this as an opportunity to also tell their story. Yeah, I love yeah. that. What advice would you give to other young girls that maybe want to advocate for something but think that maybe they're too young um, to advocate for anything or they won't be taken too seriously. Yeah, yeah, I always, whenever I do speeches or presentations to young girls or anyone really, but especially young girls, I always say that your age is just a number yes. and that it doesn't define what you can and cannot do. So I was 11 when I started my project and it prompted $15.7 million to clean up our river. Yeah. So your age really is just a number that's there. And exactly. kind of. Try to forget about that. And if you're really passionate about something, you can create change. Yeah. And you, Angie. Yeah. <laughs> I love my community. Mm. I love everything about our community. And so I kind of just lived my life with everything I learned, I gave back. Everything I learned, I tried to pass on to the youth. Mm -hmm. And then about three years ago, I took a nosedive into a breakdown. And what I learned coming through that breakdown is black women have never been taught to heal. In fact, they never even knew they could feel. Mm -hmm. they, and that was an eye-opener for me. Once I learned that there are so many burdens that black women carry that they can put down, mm -hmm. that they don't have to carry. I wanted to shout it from the mountaintop. Like, mm -hmm. I just wanted every black woman in this province, in this world, to just know mm -hmm. it's okay to feel. Mm -hmm. It's okay to cry. Mm -hmm. It's okay to live. Mm -hmm. I wanted black women to heal for the first time in their life. I wanted them to be able to say, listen, it's okay mm -hmm. to heal. Mm -hmm. And maybe start to look at what their personal journey to healing looks like. Yeah. Then that talk will be successful in my, mm -hmm. yeah. in my estimate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. The theme for this TED Talk that you guys are a part of is fearless forward thinking. And uh, we did touch earlier about the idea of being fearless and what that means. Uh, and I want to ask you as well what your idea of forward thinking means to you in your field. So whether you're doing you know, something that is environmental, if something that is social work related, something that is yoga related, I need to know what it is that you, that how fearless you know, um, applies to what you're doing, how forward thinking applies to what you're doing. I'm going to ask you first, Ariel. Okay. So you could do either one or both? Hmm. Yeah. I think it's a bit of both. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm in the political arena, but mm -hmm. I also work with young girls. And mm -hmm. I think the one thing, when I think about both, um, I always feel this sense of we're going to be okay. Mm. When I think about the future, so when I'm talking to young girls, and they're so aware of the problems. And not only are they aware, but they have solutions. Mm -hmm. And I think we're living in a time of such uncertainty, yeah. especially politically. People sure. feel a bit uneasy. Mm -hmm. And when they look at youth, they're like, oh, I don't know if they're going to be good leaders. Like, where will the world be in 10 to 15 aware. years? Yeah. But for me, I just always think we're going to be OK yeah. when I think about the future. Yeah. And I see my generation and those that are younger. I think we can do this. We'll be fine. Definitely. I mean, with people like you, sort of championing for younger leaders, I think mm. we're definitely going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when I think about forward thinking and I think about fearlessness, mm -hmm. I think about no. 
Mm. And I think about the role that no plays in the life of a woman and how that's so different from what a no means to a man, mm -hmm. right? When a man is approached with a no, it's a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And when a woman is approached with a no, and I think this is, I can't speak for the experiences of black women or diverse women, but I think when women are given a no, it's a door is closed, it's mm -hmm. a defeat, it's a, yeah. I'm going to dim my light mm -hmm. and I'm going to back down and I'm going to back away. Mm -hmm. And I think that for women to come into their own and shine and heal and care and be compassionate and passionate, mm -hmm. we have to talk about what no means in a different context. Mm -hmm. For me, I think about no in the context of goal setting and pursuit, right? And that's mm -hmm. what I'm really passionate about is helping younger women in particular see their goals as attainable and realistic. Mm -hmm. And no is such a fearful word and such a threat to the success of women mm -hmm. in whatever it is they want to do, whether it be something like education or working in STEM or something like healing mm -hmm. or something like helping other women find their passion. Um, so I think in the general conversation of fearlessness, no has to be considered as something present and something that is so different for women to tackle and work with and work through and support each other through because it's a unique experience that I think only other women really can help each other with and it goes back to what you're saying about the role of community and sisterhood and yeah. you know only women understand what no means to another woman right like when I said that I think all of us went yeah like you know we felt it a little bit yeah. so I think that that's such a big part of this conversation. And again, it's something that I don't think there's one answer to, right? Which is why I'm so excited to share the stage with all of us, because I think that we all bring such a Definitely. different angle on it, mm -hmm. and they're all equally as valid and important and needed and necessary. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Okay, so we have talked about women, young girls, but I think we also need to talk about how men can be allies. Mm -hmm. So yep. I want to ask you guys, what do you think men can do to be allies in your fields, uh, be allies to women, uh, to be supportive of other women? Mm. Great question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so integrating more women into STEM and getting young girls especially interested in STEM mm -hmm. is not a women's mission. It's not just put on the moms, it's yes. all of us. Yeah. So. Um, a lot of the research and stuff that I've done on this mm -hmm. issue is uncovering the unconscious bias and the things that we do in everyday life mm -hmm. that steer women away from STEM, especially at a really early age. Studies say that by the time you're in middle school, mm -hmm. you either do or you don't like STEM, mm -hmm. right? That's crazy. That's true. Yeah, it's shaped by the shows on TV, mm -hmm. the toys they play with. What do girls play with? Nurturing toys, yeah, right? Yeah. Kitchen sets and baby dolls <laughs> and tea parties. And yeah. the guys uh, use Legos and video games and tools that can help them facilitate their spatial abilities and mathematics skills and problem solving and that kind of stuff. So I think just the more that men especially and all of us open our eyes to some of the unconscious things that we do in everyday life, mm -hmm we can facilitate the problem because we can't tackle this just half of us the same as we can't grow a society with just half of us going into STEM. Exactly. So we need to work together. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I agree. One of the main reasons why I left teaching, I was a phys ed teacher in Vancouver and there were two fields side by side and we had segregated classes so the girls would be on this field and the guys here. And so many times I would hear the male teachers say, come on boys, pick up your pace or you're gonna be thrown over into the girls' field. Mm. Like it was an insult yeah. or a weakness, a weakness. Yeah. and uh, a punishment. And uh, I think that men really need to be careful of their language and how, how adult men as role models uh, teach boys. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a responsibility that they have. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Well, unconscious bias seems like a theme here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I think by acknowledging unconscious bias, you acknowledge your privilege. Mm -hmm. And so for males, mm -hmm. being that they're 
um, gender identification being a male mm -hmm. is privilege and we can add all kinds of other things into that but solely that one factor puts them at an advantage mm -hmm. over women and so I think unpacking your privilege and doing that self-work mm -hmm. we talked about self-work too um, is important for men to be able to find their allyship mm -hmm. uh, because it does take a lot of undoing, unteaching, unlearning uh, all the ways that we have been socially conditioned based on gender, class, race, all of these things. And so there is an, a responsibility for men to do that work, but as women, we have to also help and support, I think, men in that also because there is some ignorance that exists when you don't live in experience. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that mm. part of allyship is not us taking responsibility for what they don't know, mm -hmm. but to also offer what we can to help them, right. those that are willing, you know, mm -hmm. to really play that ally role. Exactly. I think it's important that we also try to uplift them and support them mm -hmm. in a way that doesn't put the onus on us, of course, exactly. but um, just is a partnering sort of role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Will you? I was going That's there. Yeah. <laughs> That's right where I was going. Yeah. But just to add to that, I would say that it's really as simple as like going inside and saying, do I have any beliefs about women? Because that's where it starts. So if you yeah. have conversations or thoughts or ideals in your mind where you think women and then whatever your next line is, mm -hmm. that's the first place for you to start because there, there are multiple bias that, they, that they're operating in, yeah. not aware that they're operating in because it's conditioning. Mm -hmm. And all, we're, all have been conditioned, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And I think for women too, we, we talked a lot about being placed in those boxes, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of men place us in those boxes based on their conditioning. Mm -hmm. So I think just for them to go inside and do some inside work and what do I believe about women? Mm -hmm. They could just start there. Yeah. What do I believe about women? Mm -hmm. You know, and just start the conversation with, with themselves there, and, and yeah. that would be a good start. Okay, let's say you do finally bring a woman into the room, mm -hmm. and she's the only woman in the room. Mm -hmm. What do you do then? Right, I think yes. that role of allyship yeah. is also so important oh, because the, wor the work that you yeah, guys have talked about exactly is like that's right. the initial mm -hmm. understanding, right? But then once she's in that space, how can you be an ally to her? Because yeah. I think that's a lot of men I feel like can get halfway there and they're like, okay, yeah, we hired her, yeah. awesome. Yeah. But then it's like, she's there. She what does she need, safe. right? Mm -hmm. she, you know, yes. she doesn't feel heard. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, There was an awesome yeah. article out um, recently from Andy Grammer, who's a musician, and he took all the women on his tour. I don't know if anyone else saw this. Yeah. And he's been touring for like over a decade or something. And he brought all the women together and he said, what can we do to make this tour better for you? Mm -hmm. And all of them were experienced. Like they've been on many tours. They've traveled with many different artists. And they said, this is the first time anyone has ever stopped and asked how can we make this tour more accessible and better for you as women on this tour wow. and that like it's been all over the internet and I think it's because it applies in any industry yeah. and to every woman sure. like yeah I'd love if someone sat me down and said how can I make this better for yeah. you right yeah. like yeah. and I think that's my advice for men who want to be allies is let women speak yeah. let yeah. them speak mm -hmm. and learn to actively listen to them mm -hmm. and what they need and what mm -hmm. they're saying and what they're bringing to the table and their the ideas that they're bringing up in their businesses and what mm -hmm. the skills that they have the talent that they bring mm -hmm. let let them speak to that and then be active in your listening to that and don't just say great we're glad you're here yeah, yeah. you know be like oh yes you have you something just, to bring yeah what your power is what your passion is stick with that and there are people watching there are people listening trust me there are people watching Mm -hmm. You might think that nobody's watching you, nobody's hearing what you're saying, but the reality is people are watching and something will happen one day that will just blow your mind and you will realize, wow, I was a part of that and I'm so glad I stuck with it and I didn't give up and look how many people's lives I'm changing. Yeah, mm -hmm. so stick with it. So thank you guys for coming today. It's been an amazing night getting to know each and every one of you and I cannot wait to hear your TED Talks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.